In this video, I'm going to look at organic synthesis. So the way we'll do it is I'll pose a question like this. How would you synthesize propanoic acid from propane? And then we'll break it down into the functional groups that are involved and establish the route for the synthesis. We'll look at the reagents and conditions required along the way. And obviously we'll write chemical equations for the steps. So the functional groups involved are propane is an alkene and propanoic acid is a carboxylic acid. So the first thing you've got to do is ask yourself, can you convert an alkene into a carboxylic acid by one step or by a sequence of steps? So if you have a think about that and then I'll go through the answer. So unfortunately there is no direct route from alkene to carboxylic acid but you can go via an alcohol and so that's the route that we're going to take. The alcohol, because it's not the final product, this would be classed as an intermediate. So the next thing you need to think about is how would you do this conversion and then how would you do that conversion there. So think about reagents and conditions now. So the first part of the synthesis is to react the alkene with steam. So that's gaseous water. So we've got a temperature condition of over 100 degrees C. And we would need a phosphoric acid catalyst to be present as well. And this reaction is known as hydration. So that's going to give us, that's going to turn the alkene into this alcohol intermediate. To convert the alcohol into the carboxylic acid, you would need to oxidise it. So the oxidising agent you'd use would be acidified, that's the H plus part of the formula there, acidified potassium dichromate. And to make sure you got the carboxylic acid, you would need to use reflux. So now we've established the route, we need to think about the chemical equations for the reactions taking place. So if you have a think about that, and then I'll go through the answer. So if we think about step one, we've got to turn propane into an alcohol. Now it's really important that this alcohol is propan-1-ol and not propan-2-ol. So you can see I've, I've got a displayed formula there for propane. Now when the water adds across this double bond, the H can add there or there which means the OH goes on the other carbon. So it is technically possible to make propan-2-ol from propane. Now the problem with that is if you've got propan-2-ol here, when you oxidize that, you're gonna end up with a ketone because propan-2-ol is a secondary alcohol. So it's really important that you create propan-1-ol in step one. And the best way to show that in your equation is to, to draw a structural formula equation and that you're leaving the examiner in no doubt that you know that that's got to be propan one all. So the equation would look like this, C3H6, so that's propane, plus H2O, that's your steam, gives CH3, CH2, CH2OH. So this is definitely this primary alcohol which we can then oxidise up to a carboxylic acid. And there's your second equation. So we've got the propan one all being oxidized twice under reflux. So that's why we need two moles of oxidizing agent. And we make our carboxylic acid that we want to make, propanoic acid. And we'd get one mole of water produced. And if you remember that one mole of water is produced in the first oxidation when the propan one all would be converted to the aldehyde propanal. So we look at another one now. So how would you convert ethane into ethanol? So have a think, is this possible via one step or do we have to go via an intermediate? So again, not possible in one step and so we're gonna to have to go via an intermediate and you can see there, I've already chosen the intermediate, is going to be chloroethane. Now you could have used any haloalkane, I've just chosen chloroethane. 
So essentially we're turning an alkane into a haloalkane and then we're going to turn the haloalkane into the alcohol. So now we need to think how would we do those steps. So step one we would need to react the ethane with chlorine and that needs to be in the presence of UV radiation. And this is an example of radical substitution. And step two, we would need to perform a hydrolysis reaction on the chloroethane. And so to do that, we would react it with aqueous hydroxide ions. So this could be aqueous sodium hydroxide, and obviously that needs heat as well. So if you want to have a think about the reactions now, the equations for those two steps, and then we'll go through the answer. So there's your first one, the ethane would be reacted with chlorine in the presence of UV and would give chloroethane and hydrogen chloride. And there's the second equation, so chloroethane with OH minus ions creates ethanol and a chloride ion. And if you put the sodium hydroxide in your equation instead of the OH minus, that's what it would look like. Now the exams love asking questions like the one I've put in orange there on the board. Suggest a problem with step one. So this route that I've chosen to create the ethanol has a problem and it's centered around this reaction between ethane and chlorine. So if you just have a think about why that might lead to a problem and then we'll discuss the answer in a moment. So the problem with step one is the fact that there are more than one product of this reaction. So if your chlorine ended up being in excess, then you would have lots and lots of chlorine radicals in your reaction mixture. So you can see I've drawn up two propagation steps, starting with the product that we wanted. So if this was in excess, that would mean that further chlorine radicals could strip out the next hydrogen. So you can see there, one of these hydrogens is gone, created the HCl molecule, and we've got this new radical here. Then that would react with even more chlorine and produce this dihaloalkane. So this is 1,1-dichloroethane. That's obviously not what we want because to make ethanol, we need the product to be chloroethane in the end of, at the end of step one. So to prevent that from happening, instead of the chlorine being in excess, we would need to make the alkane, the chemical in excess. So that's an example of a question that they could ask you to sort of really sort of test your knowledge of the chemistry behind the synthesis.